Hi everyone, let's go over my micro and local bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with my micro impulsive scenario to the downside, where we are looking for a five wave structure, where this wave five preferably was made yesterday when the markets were still open. The fact that it's now weekend, the markets are closed, increases the probabilities for a sideways ranging structure and lowers the probabilities we're still going to get a wave five to the downside, as that is an impulsive structure. Something else that is important is the time of this wave 4, which is something Jarvis mentioned in Discord yesterday very nicely. This wave 4 over here is very, very long in time compared to this wave 2. Now, it is correct that if wave 2 is short and deep, wave 4 tends to be shallow and long in time, the rule of alternation in Elliott waves. However, this wave 4 is about 6 to 8 times longer in time than this wave 2, which is too long kind of right that's not really what you want to see and then finally if this is the high of a wave four and we're looking for a wave five to the downside you want to see impulsive structures and at the moment what we see over here is not really supporting that as well so in total the probabilities of this scenario are lowering while the probabilities for this scenario are increasing at the moment this is a WXY scenario where in W we then have a zigzag ABC. Most common target for wave C is between the 1 and the 1.236 taken from the high to the low of A to the high of B, which as you can see has been very nicely respected indeed. Then we're looking for a wave X and the target area for a wave X is very, very wide between the 382 and the 886. So it's more about what do we see locally over here to get a better estimation of the target for wave X. Now one of the target areas for wave X is the 786 to the golden pocket area and between that area or around that area, we have my resistance area between 27 points. 1k and 27.3k which is quite interesting but before we get here we have to at least go over a couple of hurdles the first one is the gap that we have over here which is in confluence with the 3a2 the high of this gap has not yet been touched so this horizontal level at 26.8k is important and if price gets to that level we might see a bit of a rejection the 3a2 is usually a minimum target for wave x so that's definitely something we have to keep in mind but if price moves to the upside fills this inefficiency then we have a bit of an order block and a golden pocket and then we have the resistance area so those are the different levels that i am looking for towards the upside what is interesting about a WXY scenario is this could be a sharp double zigzag WXY scenario. So we have a zigzag in W, any corrective structure in X, and then another zigzag in wave Y, where the support area that is going to be important is between 25.7K and 25.9K. And the reason I like to specifically talk about the double zigzag is because of the higher time frame potential triangle scenario that we have over here. So in a triangle scenario, all of the waves have to be zigzags except one. One wave can be complex. So if four out of five waves are zigzags, A, B, C, and then E, wave D can be a more complex structure and a complex structure in a triangle tends to be part of the zigzag family, meaning double or triple zigzags. And this is why it's so interesting that in this wave D, we might see a double zigzag WXY as I've drawn over here. And also the most common target for wave D is between the golden pocket and the 786, which is in confluence with that lower support area. So that is very nice indeed. Now, if we then zoom in to the potential scenarios of this wave X, I have two for you the first one is a flat scenario for wave x after which we then expect more downside right so in this scenario we then expect a b c and eventually continuation down in a wave y to the support area now in this particular scenario we then have a three wave structure in a wave a looking for a three wave structure in a wave b and then a wave c to the downside that would be quite volatile for the weekend not gonna lie if we take this low impulsive move to the upside in a wave c but this is one of the scenarios and you can also see over here i have the high of the gap on the one hour selected but which is at 26.8k so this is an interesting level that's the first area of resistance right most common target area for wave c is between the 
continue to 1.618 over here, which is between 26.8K and 27K, most common target area for wave B is between the 1.236 and the 1.38, which is between 26.3K and 26.2K. Now, what is important is that for a flat scenario, you at least want to see price go below the 0 0.9 for then an impulsive structure wave C to the upside. So this is a minimum level for this being an A, B, C flat scenario. And if we look for additional support around this wave B target area, I have to open my confluence folder over here. Currently, we are raging on top of the daily, but we do have a bit of a support resistance area over here, which is between 26.1 well, to 2K and 26.3K. And if I zoom out to the four hour, you can actually see which one it is. It's a support resistance area where here we found support, resistance, support, resistance broke out. And, you know, this was a weird structure. And then over here again, resistance, resistance, bit of resistance back to support. So it's an important level on the chart. And that could be interesting for the low of this wave B for then a wave C impulsively to the upside does mean we have to break this daily level over here which as you can see has been touched already many times the second scenario is a wxy scenario and in this particular scenario we do not expect the low to be taken per se so here we are then looking for a three wave in w three waves in x and then eventually we look for three waves in y now in this particular scenario the target for wave x the golden pocket over here has already been hit however the 886 all the way to the 886 is still a target for wave x importantly low though is the amount of support that we have below price at the moment so here we have the golden uh, pocket in kind of confluence i suppose with the daily if we look at the candles closing on top of the daily that's nice but the daily over here if it doesn't hold the only like i suppose kind of support area is this white box and this white box is this gap over here now you can see however that this white box has been touched once meaning it's weakened so if price loses this level and goes to this white box again the probabilities are lower for a bounce and higher for continuation which increases the probabilities for the other scenario where we are looking for an abc flat scenario but in this particular scenario what you then want to see is a bounce to the upside for wave y a three wave structure where the most common target for wave y is between the 0 0.618 and the 1.236 which is between well basically taking this high over here but is between 26.7k and 27k if we then look at the CVD divergences, then over here more locally, we have bearish CVD divergences building up and the bullish CVD divergences haven't yet played out. So every time we had bullish CVD divergences, the market counters with bearish CVD divergences because these bullish CVD divergences first appeared when price was over here. Higher low on price lower low on the cvd bullish cvd divergence we had a bit of a bounce but then we got bearish cvd divergences locally on the three and five minute chart creating downside pressure which then led to bullish cvd with this low but then again downside pressure with bearish cvd at this little high over here so that's not what you want to see and currently again over here we have first of all by the way bullish cvd between these two lows higher low in price lower low on the cvd but again we have bearish cvd as well between these highs and these highs so if i show you this on the chart then you can see lower high on price but a higher high on the yellow line right bearish cvd divergence where the target for this divergence is price taking this low but of course it increases the probabilities as well for price to then go below these lows as well so if to wait how this works uh, how this plays out we also have still this bearish cvd divergence where the target is this low over here so it's important for price if we want to see upside it's important to invalidate this bearish cvd divergence because these already played out and price has to invalidate this bearish cvd divergence meaning it has to take this high over here and then we'll take it from there right so the probabilities of the different scenarios are as followed on the micro, 
the WXY scenario has a higher probability of playing out at the moment, which is the potential double zigzag scenario, which then could fit a triangle scenario on the medium time frame. So we then have an ABC currently in an X, which is then a ranging structure. And then we'd be looking for a wave Y to the downside, where this is an important support area and could be very interesting for longs, depending on what we see over here. More locally, though, if we go to the local scenarios, then I explain two scenarios where in both of the cases we are still looking for price to move to higher levels in this scenario yes we first expect a move down and a move up and then a b and a c but in a wxy we also expect a move to the upside i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational video i've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion which is the cvd and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye